Right. What we've done is we've removed the top cover that uh, is part of the bed here, which allows access from the top. We've removed the engine compartment door, which allows us access uh, from the side, and we have it up on ramps, so we have access from the bottom. We removed the door because it's up at an angle like this, and it affects the reach, and you bump your head on it coming out of here. So simply uh, remove that, and will allow us to work on this a little more easily, uh, since we will be spending a lot of time in this area of the vehicle. And so, wanted to give you some close-ups to what it looked like before uh, conversion. And so we'll give you some close-up shots of the engine bay here. Uh, with the cover off, we get better lighting and so forth. So you can see it's a fairly crowded little compartment here. Um, but let's take a close-up look. This is the view from the rear, and we'll come in and give you a little close-up here. There's a hole back in the corner back in there, which may be used for something. We'll investigate all that type of thing further. There's also a shelf in the front part here that goes all the way across. They've got a cover over that hole on this side and you can see where there had been a cover on the other side previously those may be handy we'll see here's the power steering uh, reservoir power steering pump which we will reuse air cleaner is going to go away alternator is going to go away Here's the view from above. One side, that's the driver's side. There's that hole I was talking about. Quite a bit of room in there. Here's the uh, there's the passenger side. The shelf, top view of the engine. You can see the shop floor down on that one side here. This is a uh, heat shield for the exhaust. That will be gone. There's the uh, transaxle engine mounting area right there and so there's the throttle so I have a feeling this is going to be a very nice little setup starting solenoid right down there We get all these vacuum lines out and coolant hoses and intake. We're going to have plenty of room to to play around and do what we want to do. Ignition coil. Another item. No use for it all. There's a lot of plumbing on this thing. This is the water pump right here. And you can see a water line. There's the coolant reservoir. Water line goes down. That looks like probably a thermostat housing right there. And a line that goes forward. And there's two large lines that run forward to the radiator in the front of the vehicle.
so soon to change a little view from the bottom here you can see the exhaust there's the muffler long muffler Catalytic converter, exhaust just, you know, snakes all around because you have horizontally opposed cylinders and the exhaust comes out uh, of the sides, or the ends, or however you want to look at it, front and rear of each bank. So there's quite a bit of exhaust plumbing. And of course, that's something we won't have anymore also. No more leaky engine. No more oil on my shop floor. So anyway, while we're working on the vehicle doing this type of thing, there's something else going on at the same time. While we're working on the vehicle itself, we're also bottom balancing the cells. And we take them down to 2.5 volts. We're pulling out 30 amps at a time. Uh, the wires provided by the uh, Power Lab 8 they get pretty doggone hot at 30 amps. So it'll pull a maximum of 40 that's a, a little more than I want to pull out just because those wires get I mean you, you can't touch the alligator clips I mean when this is all over so here's uh, 10 of them that have already been done we're just about a fourth of the way through these have been through uh, two cycles you take them down to 2.5 volts and that's where the uh, Cell Pro Power Lab comes in. It's doing that automatically. It will shut off and uh, beep at us when this uh, reaches the 2.5 volts. From there, we will reset the Power Lab and take it down to 2.65 volts and uh, after letting these sit overnight. And then they'll bounce back to uh, about 2.5 to 2.7 volts and uh, I'm sorry to 2.75 to 2.77 volts and that's where we'll leave them that's where we want them 2.75 is our target uh, and we uh, we allow a variance for that uh, uh, two hundredths and so that's what we're shooting for but that takes a little bit of time take these uh, 180 amp per hour cells uh, down to that point uh, it takes approximately three hours at 30 amps uh, they come about 50 percent state of charge 50 60 percent and so we don't care how long it really takes because we're doing something else and it's on autopilot so multitasking here uh, and so while uh, we're doing one thing, we have uh, an automated process going on at the same time. Over here, leaning against the wall, we have our battery rack. It's waiting to be uh, finished. We need to uh, uh, make our mountings in the vehicle still. And then we will also uh, clean and paint this and uh, install it in the vehicle. So that's something else that is kind of done uh, at the same time. But today it's a, a rainy day out. And so we're not going to uh, be doing any painting. We paint outside. So anyway, we'll continue to keep you updated on the progress on our transporter project. The starting battery for this vehicle is under the 
passenger seat and it has its own little cover here so we can see and one of the first things you want to do is remove the ground wire and so that's what we've done we will leave the uh, this uh, starting battery we will use it as our auxiliary battery and there is room underneath the uh, underneath this front seat to put a DC to DC converter here also and so we like to have them in the same same area and so that's what will be done here again uh, as is our normal preference so first thing disconnect your 12 volt battery on with our uh, removal of the internal combustion components another item that we always highly recommend that you have when doing a conversion is the uh, manuals for it. We happen to have two manuals for this vehicle and of course one being the factory manual which is great especially for having all the uh, wiring schematics and so forth that can make life a little little more pleasant, a little easier. Well, it's not something that uh, you have with an electric vehicle and that is a bunch of grease. I've washed my hands a few times a day. Nasty under there. And that's one of the things I, I enjoy about an electric vehicle. Once we get the internal combustion out of the way and clean the engine bay, then it's a clean job. Much more enjoyable. Well, let's see what we did. Well, got her out of there, and this is just the, the first step, get the engine out of the way here, and now we'll get the, uh, the adapter on its way, start working on that. Um, we have a, a reconditioned transaxle that we're going to put in for the, uh, the customer. So we're going to be pulling this transaxle out. It's getting new uh, constant velocity joints, um, new uh, clutch components, uh, not just um, on the uh, friction disc and, and uh, pressure plate. He, he's got a new flywheel, uh, new hydraulic system, the whole works. So do a little bit more on this one than uh, the normal conversion. We normally replace the, uh, the pressure plate and friction disc and flywheel. We go with the heavy duty setup and a light and flywheel typically. Um, but this guy wants to make sure this vehicle's in top notch condition when it gets back. So we're doing a little more to this than we normally do with a conversion, as I've already said. And so in addition to uh, kind of chronicling this uh, with video we're also doing this extra work so this one's going to be in the shop a little longer than normal but anyway this is the uh, the uh, four cylinder horizontally opposed liquid cooled 2.1 liter uh, engine and it's for sale anybody's interested and this it just takes up room in the shop until we get rid of it. So anyway, I'll take a close-up for you of the, uh, the engine and the hole that we have. We've just removed the engine, so there's some cleaning up to do in there, um, some wiring to take care of. Uh, there, there been, we haven't removed any of the, uh, the plumbing yet. There's a ton of hoses that connected this thing. This thing's got more coolant lines on it than you can imagine. And so it reminds me of one of the uh, attributes of an electric conversion is that it's so much simpler. This is so much more involved. The potential for uh, 
problems is so much greater. The ability to work on this thing in there was, was a pain. So what we're going to do to this vehicle is going to make it so much nicer, a lot more reliable, a lot more simplistic, and just a great all-around vehicle that this gentleman will really enjoy. So anyway, let's, uh, let's do a close-up. So here you can see the exhaust system kind of takes up a lot across the back here. These are an interesting engine. It's a kind of a cross between the, the old Volkswagen air-cooled engine. Looks a lot like it, but a little bit different. Instead of the uh, fend cylinders, it's cylinders that have water jackets in them but it's still got the exposed push rod tubes underneath with the uh, valve covers on the opposing sides there. This one of course is fuel injected. And here's the hole where it used to belong. Tucked in the corner temporarily is the uh, power steering pump which we'll be reusing transaxle in place for the moment till we remove it there's the coil still over there that's going to come out but there's a lot of wiring that needs to be kind of cleaned up and bundled and stashed out of the way but you can see we have quite a bit of room in there for our AC 75. So the AC 75 should fit in this hole quite nicely along with the uh, few other components that will go in there. Not a whole lot. We'll have our uh, our brake system in the back here, although we might put it up front. And there is some room up front because we're doing away with the radiator and so forth, so we'll kind of weigh some of those decisions as to what we want to do. So anyway, that's it for now. We'll keep you updated.